Hi, in this video I'll show you how to pass parameters within Power Query. So what does that really mean? So this would be a good example of when you want to have a user input a selection or type in a selection and you just need to refresh the query and have that selection become a filter into your table or perform some kind of calculation. In this instance, I'm just passing a parameter, a value, so it would filter this table. I'm going to use a simple case here where we're just passing the manager's name, manager1, here to get all the employee IDs that have completed a course under manager1. But you can think of all the other different various uses for this. And it could be something as simple as this or more complex of trying to pass a parameter where you're performing calculations. So let's see how this can be done. So you can see here I have two tables here. One is my course table. I have courses here with IDs and their statuses and I have the IDs and their supervisors, manager one, two, three, and four. Let's say for example I wanted to pass all the completed statuses of individuals for course one under manager one and I have that available here. This is already set but what if I want to look at manager two? I can just type in manager two and click on the data. Whoops, let me get out of there. Click on the data, refresh all and I can see everything here is under manager 2. Now I said before this is a very simple example but you can probably think about all the other more complex examples you can use when you're passing these parameters from user inputs into a eventual output table. So let's see how this can get done. Let me go into my course tab here. This is where I had my courses, my IDs, and the status of each of the individuals. Turn this into a table first. Go to insert and I'm going to insert this as a table. My table does have headers. The first row are the header rows. Click OK. Give this a name. Let's call this worker underscore status. Now I want to bring this into Power Query as a connection only. So go under data. Go to from table and range because I turned this into a table. Click on that. It's going to bring up the Power Query editor. Make this smaller or fit it within the view here. And all I need to do is have this table and make it a connection only table because the assumption is this table will get modified or updated later. And so that particular update will take this table and I'll, and I'll reference this table to perform any other manipulation. So I'll go ahead and close and load. By default, I have this particular setup for my Power Query as a clo close and load to connection only. Now, mo most cases, you will probably have an instance where you're going to close and load it into a table and it's going to bring out a new worksheet. My particular instance of Power Query, I have it close and load as a connection only. So let me cancel that. So let me get back into my Power Query and I'm just going to close and load it and it's going to bring it up I'll close and load only as a connection. So click and close and load. You can see my queries and connection pane is open. It, it's a connection only query. I'm going to do the same for the worker manager information here, this range of data. Go to insert table and make this a table. We'll call this worker underscore manager or MGR. And now go under data and also get and transform data from table and range. It brings up the Power Query editor. And I want to do the same thing, close and load it as a connection only. All right, so it's going to take the table. Oh, I didn't forget. I forgot to give the table a name here. Let's see. Did I forget it? Let's go to the design and let's see. Yes, I, for I forgot to give it one or maybe when I did it, I didn't press enter. So let's change that. We'll go to worker underscore manager, press tab. And let's see if it picked it up here. Right click and we'll, name we'll just rename it here. Worker underscore manager. You don't necessarily need to have a name for this. You can take the default names, but it's probably better to have a name here to give it more description. So I will call it that. Press tab. And it didn't pick that up because it probably because I changed it there because it was table one. Let's do this all over again. Delete that. Click delete. That particular query is gone. I have the name of this table here. Go to data. Go to from table and range and click close and load. It, it will put it picked up the worker underscore manager name from the table. It's going to add that in there. I really didn't have to do this. I could, I could have renamed the table and went into the source data to do this, but it's probably good to do it from scratch. 
click close and load and now the table name has showed up. Now what I want to do here under sheet one is make another table and this will be my selection table. So I'll just say enter worker, enter manager name. And I'll just put a default name here, manager one. Turn this into table, double click the auto fit, turn this into table, insert table. My table does have a header, it's the first row is the header row. Click OK. I'll call this manager select. M G R underscore select. Press enter. I probably didn't press enter at the last time. And for this, I'm also going to bring it in into Power Query from table and range. But I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to make this into a, I'm going to draw it down to just have that value and not have the headers. So click on the blank space in the cell, right click and click draw down. And it's just going to have that particular one value there. This is going to load as a connection only load. And you can see it's connection only for that manager select. So this is part of my output, right? I have my manager selection table here and I want to have my output table here for if I select a manager one or manager two, etc. What I need to do now is I need to use one of these as my reference, right? I'll use my worker status, right click and click reference. So I'm going to reference that particular connection and I want to have a column here that has the manager name. Select on ID and this is going to be using the particular function called merge queries. It's almost like a lookup. In fact, it does lookup capabilities. So I'm going to merge two queries, this query and my uh, worker underscore manager query. So select on that and it's going to bring up my merge um, window. Click ID, select my other table I want, to work, I want to merge it with. That's worker underscore manager. Click ID here. These are the common fields. So it's asking you to select a table and matching columns to merge a table. So the merge table function I'm going to leave this as a left outer join. It's almost like a lookup, as, as I mentioned earlier. So it's going to bring back this table, but based on the IDs here. Click OK. You'll have another column here that has a table text. And if I click on the blank space, you'll notice that it's brought in another table within that cell. So you can see here the IDs match. Looking at the last three characters, one NT, and it's also brought in that manager. And all I need to do is have that manager value there. So I just need to click on the double headed arrow, select deselect ID because I just want the supervisor's name, deselect that I don't want additional column name as a prefix, click OK, and it's merge those particular columns with this table. So in a way it's done a lookup. And if people are familiar with VLOOKUP, that's kind of what it's done. And this is a table that I want to drop into my output food once someone selects manager one or manager two or types that in, I want to have this output to also say manager one or manager two. So I'm going to select this and just put a, de a default filter selection here and I'm going to change that later on. So you can see when I click OK, we're looking at the, the code here. This is the M code. This is what Power Qu This is what runs Power Query. It's called M code. So each of these, uh, the, each of these steps has an M code statement here, right? If I look at merge queries, this is all part of the M code. The one that we're interested in is this filtered rows step. Now I want to change that manager selection. I'm going to open up my queries pane here, and I want to change that manager selection to to reference manager underscore select. So just delete this and type in manager select. So this oops spelled manager incorrectly here or spelled that incorrectly. And this is where we're passing the parameter. If once we have an input here, it's going to put it into that query under the manager underscore select query. And then since I've added here for the filter, it's going to pass that parameter here in this filter. So click close and load. And I'm not going to take the default where it close and loads it to a connection. I wanted to put it into a table here within my worksheet. So I'm going to select table and my existing worksheet here Let's put it in cell G, G1. Let's delete this and select G1. Click OK. And now let's put it in here. You can see here, these are all manager one. If I select the dropdown, it's all manager one. If I wanted to try and see if I can look at manager two, press it, put the number two there, press enter, go to data, refresh all, manager two is going to show up here. 
right? So that's all, that's all manager two. So this is what I mean when we are passing a parameter in to Power Query. This is a very simple example. You might think, oh, well, why don't I just make a table, or do some VLOOKUPs, and just have it filter here, or just use slicers? But the uses of this kind of are can be expanded more because if you had a bunch of different steps here where you're looking at different statuses, or you wanted to perform calculations like the percentages of how many people completed under a certain manager, and wanted to hide that detail from your users, and just wanted to give them a capability of one click does all after they do a selection, passing parameters in Power Query can be a very powerful tool. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.